if I were to tell you that this is, let's say R, if I were to tell you that this is theta, Raphael, what do you, how do you think you will find this? Okay, so Raphael says that he is going to use sine, let's say this is Y, so sine theta is going to be opposite over this, which means that Y can be calculated by R sine theta, so here is going to be R sine theta, here is going to be R cosine theta. These are the things that you can already do. And uh, you are doing it pretty well, provided that it is on a 2D plane. That's why now, vectors in 3D, actually the focus is 3D. Vectors give an unmatchable kind of uh, convenience to calculate. I mean, you just imagine, okay, this is going to be in 3D. Okay, it is going to be in 3D. And uh, you are going to be getting information that is like this, like this. First thing is, uh, I see the similarity between these two. Because I know that this distance here is modulus of A. And I'm talking about distance, because this triangle is about length, length, length. I'm not talking about vectors. So I'm converting this A to modulus of A, okay? And since I have a right angled triangle, in order for me to fulfill this, then I guess I just need to have this extra theta, which sadly I don't have. Can I, can I work out this value of theta? I can, uh, because I have dot product and cross product, correct? I use dot product or cross product, I can actually find this value of theta. But uh, let's say we suppress that, that urge to find this. And I just want to use whatever that I can visualize, whatever that I can already visualize, whatever that I already know. Which means that this distance here is modulus of A cosine theta. This distance here is modulus of A sine theta. Any question? Okay. Let me ask you now. Um, <clears throat> in vectors, is there a tool that can help me to generate a cosine theta? Yes, there is. You, we are given a new tool. That new tool is this. Right? The dot product will automatically generate a cosine theta. The dot product formula is one that I don't really need to know how it is being derived, although you can go onto the Chivas TV, you can click the yellow color box, I will show you the derivation, but it is not exactly something that is super, super necessary. So let's just take this equation as, as uh, something that we can apply. So I know from this equation, I have a cosine theta, and this, that is my trigger. My aim is to find this distance, and from the geometry that I've learned and visualized in secondary school, I know this is modulus of A cosine theta. And to calculate this, I am going to use a new tool that involves cosine theta. A dot B, this is modulus of A, modulus of B cosine theta. Okay? And I see that in this equation, there is a modulus of A cosine theta. So for modulus of B, I can shift it over to the other side, which means that if I want to calculate uh, if I want to calculate modulus of A cosine theta, I can basically do that using another version, which is A dot B divided by modulus of B. Which means that if I want to calculate the distance or the length of A projected onto B, right, the distance is, can be calculated either using this or can be calculated using this. Either or, whichever one that is more convenient. And I know because I'm working on distance, probably I should put this extra modulus. And I can tell you, too many people see the value in this, but this has the least value. The value lies in everything that comes before this. If you cannot capture all this, this one is useless. If you can start to do all this, which I'm going to show you in a little while how useful this is going to be. If you can capture all this, after a while, you can use this when this entire process automatically resides within your head. That is when using this is going to become valuable, provided that you already possess this. You get what I'm trying to say? Okay, so we don't want to just use this formula, okay? My suggestion to you is this. As long as you see this scenario, you start with the triangle. <clears throat> and like, what I, like the way that I address this triangle on the Achievers TV, you know, I was saying that this is a magic triangle. You know why this is a magic triangle? I'm going to show you today also. You master this triangle, you immediately will master every single distance question in vectors all the way until planes, every single one of them. Like really, literally, you can calculate any distance question in vectors from now on as long as you know how to make use of this triangle. 
You know why this triangle here is supposed to be magical? Because some, be some people, they cannot see that this is magical because ah, yeah, this is just a, you know, especially I'm drawing this super basic kind of scenario. Then you cannot tell that this triangle is so versatile that you can calculate all the distance that is in the, in the entire vectors. I tell you why this triangle is, is magical. A and how do you make this triangle magical? Because this triangle, you must understand, is actually subtly different from this triangle. Let me tell you what is different. So that once you recognize this, you can reproduce this again yourself. In secondary school, you will be given this. You will be given this. You will be given this. In secondary school, you will be given this tree. Then you find this, find this. That was how you did it in your secondary school. In H2 math, they will give you this. They will give you this. But this, theta, they will not give you. Actually, the theta is the key. You know why theta is the key? When I am given A, when I'm given B, and I want to find the shortest spot, I, I want to find the length of projection of A onto B, the information that is directly presented to you will be a right-angled triangle because you drew it, you know it's a right-angled triangle. You know the length of the hypotenuse because A is given, so you mod A, it is going to be the length of the hypotenuse. But do you know that there are two theta that you can make use of if you want to if you plan to use Tokaso? There are two theta. There are two. Because I drew it here, but I could have drawn it here also, right? Can, can I just ask you, why don't you draw it here? Why do you want to draw it here? Why didn't we start it off by drawing? I mean, it's not because it appears here in our notes all the time. I have a reason. You know what is the reason? It's because I'm an H2 math student. It's because I have learned H2 math with a tool. And it is that tool that prompts me to assign, instead of here, theta to be here. Theta. This is the key. I know the tools that I'm going to be using will be the dot product tool. What is the dot product tool? Dot product tool involves a cosine theta. And what is that theta in dot product? That theta in dot product is the angle that is between the two vectors, that is between A and B, correct? That is the definition of dot product. The angle theta here is the angle that is between A and B. That is why, although I have two choices to choose for theta, you must learn to assign theta to be the angle that is between two vectors because you want to subsequently make use of dot product. If you don't care about dot product, you can definitely go and assign theta here. Please remember this because I am going to start giving you a few scenarios in a while. And I want you to see, just by knowing this, you can master distance without practice, without practice. Next, I want this, okay? I want the shortest possible distance from A to B. I want this distance here.